Squirrel Success, and Cleaning a Side Hammer Scoped Muzzle Loader. William Hovey Smith, 2014. I'm the author of Extreme Muzzle Loading, and here is how to clean a side hammer scoped muzzle loader. This is Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman, and this is Squirrel Success and Cleaning a Side Hammer Scope Mounted Muzzle Loader. As you can see, this gun has a variable scope on it, and it is also a side hammer gun. Now that creates some immediate problems. When it is fired, gases escaping from the nipple coat the scope. Ooh. Get on the bases, and also because this base happens to be made for a round ball rifle, has a hollow space between it and the barrel flats. Mm. So all of this has to be cleaned very carefully. And we can't do the usual thing and immerse the entire scope in water. Mm. So uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now about the squirrel. We had a challenge with this scope. Uh, this scope is a 3x9 variable and it is made for a big game rifle and we sighted it in successfully at 25 and 50 yards. However, we ran into problems when we tried to shoot a squirrel at between 7 and 10 yards. Yep. Parallax, in fact. Uh, this scope is not designed for quite such close range shooting and consequently I could see the crosshairs very very well but the squirrel and the tree and everything near in that plane of view was so blurry I could not see well enough to place my shot so I took off my glasses I put my glasses back on I turned the diopter adjustment all the way out finally I could see well enough to shoot but by that time squirrel was long gone mm. Now this also happens to be February the 28th, which is the last day of Georgia's very long squirrel season, which starts on August the 15th. I had to get the job done. Well, we kept looking and looking and looking and did spook a squirrel close range, and it ran off and took off for parts unknown and I never saw it again. It was getting toward the last minutes of legal shooting time. And I was nearly back to the house when I saw one. Again, very, very close. Well, I had by this time turned the doctor all the way out. And lo and behold, I could see the squirrel well enough. And I shot it just like I would shoot a big game animal right behind the shoulder. Boom! Dead squirrel. So he had a success, but just barely. So I'm going to bring the camera up and get my cleaning stuff out and some water and show you how to clean this gun. Here are the ingredients that we're going to be using. We have two cleaning rods, a small tub here, some grease, paper toweling, nipple wrench, toothbrush, rags, boar butter, and a larger tub of water as well as a screwdriver. And the first thing we're going to do is of course disassemble the gun, which includes withdrawing the ramrod. Okay. I like the longer rods for cleaning. Then we're going to remove this clean out screw here. And the reason we're going to take it out now because it's in a more stable position than it ever will be again. So we will screw it out comes out easily. Okay. Goes in the tub. Turn it over. Now we're going to withdraw the lock and hammer. All right. Okay, so these can be set aside. They're actually not dirty. And put the hammer on half cock. 
and it should lift out as it does. Now we do have fouling however here and here as well on the general lock plate so this whole assembly just goes in the tub. Clump. Because the scope blocked the use of this nipple wrench I had to resort to using an open end wrench to actually turn out this nipple. Come on guy. And finally you screw it out by, by, with the fingers. There. Okay. Plunk. And that goes in the water. The desired result is to actually put water through this bore and soapy water at that. And that's the reason for the funnel here. But you do not want to immerse your scope in the water. So we're going to pour water through the funnel down the bore and out these parts here. We're now going to resort to the expedient of actually pouring water down the bore. And uh, we have our funnel here. And we used our cutoff cartridge case, which we use as a loading aid. And that goes in the end of the bore, like yay. And the cup is filled with soapy water. The entire assembly held over the pan. Now that helps to dissolve the corrosive component from black powder. So now that that is done, take your brush and clean around your scope and the black powder filing. Okay, that's pretty good for the outside right now. We'll do a little more rigorous later. But that will serve. Alright, the important part, the barrel. We have two rods. One I'm going to use for a wet patch and the other for a dry. You see a few drops of really black gunk coming out of it, so yeah, this is this is doing some good. Much better. Now this one is a dryer patch. Okay, that's coming out actually looking pretty clean. I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and actually push it through the hole here. And this will help wick out water that's in the very back of the barrel. And also through the nipple. So I have a couple of pieces there now. Now I have some more dry patches. That's feeling right now. I don't detect any moisture at all on the patch. Yes. It's wet. Yes, it's wet. Again, just work this patch back and forth. So water gets pushed back there in the very back there of the barrel. I'm fine that boar butter is a little kinder to barrels than uh, oils as a rule that you would use on regular guns. So I use it on the inside of the barrel as well as for patching material. 
material out of that barrel. That's, that's a good clean patch. And let's see how our paper is doing back here. That is quite dry. So, okay. We've got all the free water out of the barrel. Now we're going to take this barrel and we're going to put it on a low heat source. Not hot, but low heat. And just let the entire assembly with the scope and the barrel and the base just gently heat to drive any remaining moisture out. Then we're going to clean the nipples. We're going to clean the clean out screw here and reassemble the entire gun. And here is the result. Our last squirrel, and just for the record, uh, there was almost no edible meat loss. The bullet passed through the ribs, and so all the rest of the meat is just fine. Now, about the rifle. Scoping this deer hunter rifle with its side hammer caused some particular problems. If I were going to do it again, I would choose a straight six power scope rather than a variable. And the reason is this adjustment ring caused no end of problems, including having to grind a lot of metal from the hammer so that it would clear. If this scope had been just a straight tube, uh, very little work on the hammer would have been necessary because it is already offset for a scope mount. This scope is mounted as far back as it can go, so you can't get any increased clearance that way, and it caused problems with withdrawing the barrel assembly from the stock, and it also causes problems with putting it back in, as you will see. But it can be done, although it requires a little jiggling and care. All right. So we're going to reinstall this, and one other thing you have in the stock itself is this spring, which supplies tension on the ramrod. So this needs to go in first, and it goes in facing to the rear with the hump to the top. Okay, okay that's done. All right, and the stock is fed into the patent breech at a very low angle. Press down and then push in. There. And the wedge installed. Okay. Then, the other pin can be put in here, and this holds a lock plate. The lock plate is put on full cock, and then put in the mortises here, pushed into place, turned over, And the screw set. If all went well, when the ramrod is put back into the barrel channel, you should feel some tension on it as it compresses that spring. And you do. And the rifle is reassembled. And cock down, function tested, that works. So it is now nearly ready for turkey season, which starts on March the 15th, and we will proceed to go out there and attempt to take a turkey with it. But now, this is Hopi Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be safe, be ethical, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Among my prize winning books are Extreme Muzzle Loading, Backyard Deer Hunting, Crossbow Hunting, and Practical Bow Fishing, available as soft cover and ebooks. I also have an eight book ebook series on muzzle loading guns, 
and the most recent title is Hunting Big and Small Game with Muzzleloading Pistols. For more information on my books, blogs, and our nearly 300 videos, go to my website at www.hovysmith.com. Now, I'm going to be giving a free seminar on March 11 on how to become an outdoor communicator at the Charlie Elliott Wildlife Center near Mansfield, Georgia. Now, to find out about it, send me an email to the following address. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.